This is K.M. Wyland, and you are listening to the Helping Writers Become Authors podcast. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. The only reason your story's premise is important. Your story's premise is the foundation of your work. This is true for the shaping of the story itself, and it is also true from a marketing perspective. For both writers and readers, the premise is the reason we become interested in a story. Even when you don't know your premise until late in the discovery process, whether that's outlining or drafting, the premise is still the heart of it all, beating in the background, waiting for you to follow the sound and discover what it's all about. Writers often put a lot of pressure on themselves to identify and polish their premises. This is both because stripping a story down to the bare bones of a one or two sentence premise is valuable for crafting a cohesive and resonant structure, and also because the premise sentence is often considered one of the key ways of advertising a story and getting people to buy it and read it. As a result, it can be rather easy to put too much emphasis on the premise itself. After all, it's just one or two sentences. A brilliant premise is no guarantee of a good story. As Matt Bird points out in his book, The Secrets of Story, audiences purchase your work because of your concept, but they embrace it because of your characters. As a matter of fact, I've personally found myself increasingly jaded about good premises. And by this, I particularly mean flashy and high concept premises. When browsing for new reading or viewing material, I often find myself thinking, yeah, yeah, that sounds awesome, but is there any substance? Spoiler, as often as not, the answer is no. And yet it remains that the premise is a crucial tool in any storyteller's kit, as long as you understand its purpose and don't overemphasize its importance in the larger experience you're trying to craft for readers. So what is premise? A story's premise is simply a brief description of what the story is about. There are different formulae for crafting a premise sentence and different criteria for what should be mentioned. For example, protagonist, antagonist, plot goal, setting, etc. And I've talked elsewhere about how to advance your initial concept idea to a full-blown premise, as well as how to create a one or two sentence premise that includes all the necessary information for both yourself and for potential readers. As an example of a premise sentence, here's one I wrote for my gas lamp fantasy wayfarer. In Georgian London, a superpowered blacksmith's apprentice must rescue his master from debtor's prison before his former mentor, a vengeful politician with a dark secret, can enact his plan to destroy the city's poor. Now, aside from the nitty gritty of what a premise might look like, today I want to actually answer the question of what is a premise by zooming back a bit and looking at why premise is important and how it can function to offer both you and your readers important information about your story. To that end, here are three functions of a premise. Function number one, your story's premise is a plot tool. The premise is first and foremost, a tool that can be used either in brainstorming or revising your story. By distilling a story into just one or two sentences, you are forced to identify the bits that actually matter. Any writer who attempts this brain twister of an exercise will quickly realize most of the story doesn't strictly matter. Most of the characters won't be mentioned in the premise. Most of the cool, flashy bits won't be mentioned. Most of the writer's favorite scenes won't even be hinted at. This doesn't automatically mean that these bits aren't important to the story, but it does offer a sobering opportunity to examine what the story is really about underneath all its fuss and bother. And to discover that, you can use the following questions. What main conflict provides the structural through line? Who are the two or three characters who create the main story developments? 
And what is the protagonist really pursuing throughout the story? Whether you're in the process of outlining, writing, or editing, this exercise can help you gain clarity on a runaway story. It can help you identify and strengthen your main structural and thematic through line. And it can help you excise empty filler scenes. Function number two, your story's premise is a marketing tool. If you've done the work of crafting a solid premise sentence during outlining or revising, then you probably already have a handy dandy log line ready to present to agents and editors or to include in your marketing blurbs on Amazon and your book's back cover. The importance of a solid premise becomes ever more clear when it's time to use it to convince readers to buy. Especially these days, readers aren't always going to read lengthy book descriptions before deciding to buy. They may just look at your cover, scan a few reviews, and read over the first few lines of description on Amazon, which should be your premise sentence in some guise. Only if they like what they read in the premise will they click read more to get the rest of the blurb. I see so many blurbs, even on big five books, that fail to present a solidly constructed premise sentence. Although this is no indication that the book itself isn't solidly constructed, it is unfortunate because so many buyers will blur out during the long and boring sales description and move on to the next flashy cover. And function number three. Your story's premise signals to readers their favored scenes and characters. Largely, this is why premise is such a hot topic among writers. The idea is that you simply must have a unique premise, even though actually the emphasis is usually on the concept, as in log lines such as, it's Jaws meets Forrest Gump. But however important a solid premise is to the actual story, The premise itself as a marketing tool is there primarily to indicate to readers that, hey, I'm a book full of the stuff you like. Most of the time when readers are browsing for new stories, they're looking for what fits their particular tastes or even their specific mood at the time. Although a flashy high concept premise may catch their eye, what they're really wanting is a premise that indicates it will give them the kind of story they're looking for. And this is also why genre is such a powerful marketing tool. If readers are looking for romance or for action, they can shortcut the search by looking within a specific genre. But even then, most people are looking to scratch their own particular itches. Your premise, well, or at least should, indicate whether your book is going to do that. Indeed, a good premise, even in the abstract, provides exactly the same service to the writer by asking, what kind of story do you most like to write? So once you've mastered the not inconsiderable skill of distilling your story into one or two tight little sentences, how can you tell what your newly crafted premise is saying about your story? Is it suggesting the right things to the right readers? That is, is it promising them not just a cool concept, but the kind of characters that will make the whole trip worth the time, money, and effort? So here are four questions you can ask about your story's premise or the premise of a book you're deciding whether or not to read yourself to determine whether it's likely to deliver the goods. Question number one, what types of characters and interactions are offered by this premise? So recall Matt Bird's quote at the beginning of the episode. Readers don't care as much about concept as they think they do. In the end, it's the characters and more specifically their interactions that keep them coming back. Game of Thrones may have gotten optioned because of its premise, but people loved it because of its characters. Until, of course, they didn't. (laughs) This is one of the first things I look at when considering a new read. Does the blurb indicate there will be interesting characters? And more importantly, will these characters be put into situations where they spark against each other? 
if the blurb tells me the main character is off on a lonely quest for most of the book, that's not what I'm looking for. Although, of course, that may be exactly what some readers are looking for. Some readers want power struggles, others want romantic tension, still others want loving family relationships. If your book features any of these, be sure to craft a premise that says so. And if you intended to write a story about such a dynamic, only to discover it isn't showing in your premise sentence, that may be a sign that your story got off track somewhere along the line. Question number two. What themes are implicit in your premise? Your premise sentence may or may not explicitly mention the theme, but even if it does not, the themes will still be present implicitly simply through your description of your protagonist's desires and struggles. Indeed, genre itself is, again, its own shortcut indicator of certain types of themes. Most readers don't explicitly prejudge a book based on what they think the theme is, but they do decide whether or not to read a book based on their presumptions about its tone. And this is closely tied to theme. If readers want a life-affirming happy ending or a bittersweet moral victory or a scathing and tragic social comedy, they'll instinctively look for that in your premise. Perhaps even more importantly, they will instinctively reject tones and themes they don't want to read about. This is a tremendously important factor in hooking up with a satisfied readership. Writers sometimes try to hide the pointy bits that some readers may wish to avoid. But in fact, blatantly indicating those bits in your premise will not only more strongly magnetize readers who are attracted to your subject matter, it will also signal to others that this is a book they'll probably hate and that you probably don't want them buying, reading, and reviewing anyway. In marketing, expectation is everything. Question number three. What actions and scenes are implicit in your premise? In my experience, high-concept plots are less important than high-concept scenes. I'm far less interested in a hero fighting off giant mutant sharks, although that might get me into the theater, or not, than I am in the entertainment value found in the story's specific scenes. We've all watched or read stories that sounded as if they should be incredibly entertaining and rewarding, only to have them fall flat from a lack of that substance I mentioned earlier. In fact, high-concept stories can so easily bank all their bets on the concept itself that they fail to properly flesh out a story worthy of it. When readers read your story's premise, they're not just looking for a cool idea— They're also, at least subconsciously, considering whether this story might offer them the kind of scenes they're hoping for. Read your premise sentence as objectively as you can. What kind of scenes and action, whether shoot-em-ups or regency dancing, does this premise seem to indicate? And do you actually take advantage of those scenes in the story? If your premise promises an awesome hero with unique abilities, does your story not only show those abilities, but also use those abilities in the absolutely most entertaining way possible? And question number four. Are you taking full advantage of all your story's premises' implicit promises? Like all of your story's marketing, including its cover, your story's premise is, in fact, foreshadowing. It offers promises to your readers. Some of those promises are explicit. Some are implicit. But like any good foreshadowing, whatever you plant must be paid off. One of the chief reasons for negative reviews is the disconnect between what readers were led to believe in the marketing and the story experiencing they actually had. Now, granted, Some of that disconnect may merely be that the reader felt promised quality story crafting and was not given it. But in my experience, the most disappointing story experiences are usually those in which the writing was great, but the story itself didn't fulfill its premise. 
Sometimes this is because the premise sentence was poorly crafted and did not properly represent the true story. But sometimes it's because the writer thought the premise was being fulfilled within the book itself, but it was not. The importance of your story's premise should not be overestimated, but neither should it be underestimated. You can use your story's premise to help you outline, draft, and revise a better story, and then to guide the right readers into fully enjoying everything you have created for them. So I hope you'll stop by the blog and tell me your opinion about all this. What is the first thing you look for in a story's premise, whether your own or someone else's? If you'd like to be part of the word player community over on my site and join in the conversation on this subject, be sure to stop by the website at helpingwritersbecomeauthors.com. You can always find a transcript of the most recent podcast and add your voice to the discussion by visiting the first post on the site's homepage. And don't forget that if you're looking for an older post, you can always find those by putting the podcast title in the search field at the top of the right-hand column. If you enjoyed this podcast, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Music, or whatever your favorite podcast platform may be. And if you'd like to do something to support helping writers become authors, it always means a ton if you're able to leave just a quick rating or review on your site of choice. Also, many thanks to those who support my work on Patreon. Your patronage helps make helping writers become authors and its many resources available to writers everywhere. If you're interested in becoming a patron, you can find out more at patreon.com slash kmweiland. Thank you so much for listening to the Helping Writers Become Authors podcast, and be sure to check back again next week.